folks. Welcome to Education Matters. Today we have two guests. We have a co-host, Doris Hohenzey, the chair of New Hampshire Famous for Education. And we have a special guest, Ben Dick, from the Manchester Education Association here in Manchester. And he's going to be helping us learn things about what the teachers are going to be uh, affected with, with the new standards that have just been adopted by the uh, Manchester School Committee. So uh, welcome, Ben. Thank you very much. Appreciate for having, having me. Appreciate having you. And Doris, we appreciate having you. So I asked you to come on the show. And uh, what prompted that was uh, this article by uh, uh, saying that Arnie Duncan should be replaced as the head of the US Department of Education with Bill Gates because of Bill Gates' <laughs> influence in all of this uh, Common Core state standards. Mm -hmm. uh, the funding of it, I think, is what they're getting at. But anyhow, um, I mean, your view on that? I mean, the, the top down? Uh, uh, I certainly don't have a problem replacing Arne Duncan, uh, <laughs> though I might have a problem replacing him with Bill Gates. Um, I, I, I think from, I, I happen to serve as a delegate to the National Education Association Representative Assembly. And every year, for the last handful of years, we've debated the idea of whether or not we should call for Arne Duncan's resignation. And um, I think with each passing year, we are more um, adamant that we probably should. And what and is the biggest thing about him? Well, the latest thing, <laughs> the latest, the latest the thing was his stance on a recent case in California, yeah. where uh, a judge in California struck down what we commonly call tenure, oh, though in reality funny. isn't tenure. It's just a continuing contract status, which if I could take 10 seconds to try and dispel that myth. Oh, sure. One of the things that we hear all the time as public school teachers is that once we get tenure, we're, we're all set. And they liken it to what we typically think of as college educators tenure and whatnot. And, and that's not what it is. In fact, our contract doesn't even use the word tenure in it. It uses expectation of employment, meaning unless you do something wrong, you're going to have a job next year. Or unless we have to lay off due to financial reasons, mm -hmm. you'll have a job. And in California, paraphrasing an enormous case, obviously, they decided to strike that down and they, they, they were going to eliminate it. Now it's still in the courts, it hasn't been finalized, but uh, Secretary Duncan came out and essentially applauded that decision, um, taking away the protection of teachers who've been working in the systems, the public schools for years, and allowing them now to be dismissed with no cause whatsoever. And um, that was kind of the straw that broke the back and, and tilted the majority of, of delegates at this year's representative assembly to vote for the NEA to take a stance that he should, in fact, resign his position. Um, so it's, it's a long list of things, but that's the most recent. There were many parents that applauded that decision by the unions to, to slap him in the face for what he's been doing. And we, we don't have a way to get back at him, so everybody mm. was cheering when the unions came out and said, okay, that's good. You know, yeah. we've, we've got allies. And I think that's what a lot of parents are hoping to do, because we're frustrated with all these changes that really they didn't come to the parents and ask us how we feel and what we want. So. Obviously, they didn't ask you. Either. No, I think I think actually one of the the um, common tendencies in his way of doing things is that they aren't asking many of the stakeholders. They're asking, you know, they. One of the biggest problems in a, in a field of edu like education is somebody thinking they know what's best, mm -hmm. and not including those of us who are stakeholders, parents, educators. In some cases, depending on the age, obviously, the students. <laughs> I mean, yes. these are things we don't typically do. We just say, don't worry. You know, somebody says, don't worry, we've got this. Go ahead and do it. And I think that that, more than anything, is going to be a, a big problem the, the longer we allow it to go on. Right. It's a game changer. Absolutely. Even if they were omniscient, which we're finding out they're not, that game changing is not making parents happy. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. So uh, if the unions are not happy, the parents are not happy, the kids are not happy, then what do we've got? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and I think that you know part of what the article was saying is that you know someone like Bill Gates, it, he has a ton of money and clearly a smart guy, but it doesn't mean he knows everything, and it doesn't mean we should just let him choose and decide how things are going to be done. Well, he's buying public education. 
I mean, this is a corporation coming in under a foundation, buying education, and then benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. And Pearson got slapped down for that in uh, in New York State. They had a lawsuit because they're whining and dining them a little bit too much for comfort <laughs> and and benefiting in the long run. And right. they all are Pearson and Gates and Microsoft. The, it's a whole big corporate takeover of our public education system. Mm. We don't know how to stop, and we're worried about being able to put the brakes on this. Uh, as are we, <laughs> frankly. Well, we have the teachers union in Chicago. That's mm -hmm. one of the, the, the one on the forefront here. And they basically said that common core standards were developed by non-practitioners, such as test and curriculum pub publishers, as well as education reform foundations, such as the Gates and and uh, broad other broad foundations. And as a result, the Common Core State Standards better reflect the interests and priorities of corporate education reformers than the best interests and priorities of teachers and students. That seems to be the common theme. Well, I think, not speaking for, for any other groups and how they viewed it, I, I think one of the things that we're excited about in Manchester is that we've taken the opportunity to, to look at the Common Core, and I don't profess to be an expert on Common mm -hmm. Core. Um, but we utilized teachers, and we took them from all grades, and we took them from the, uh, initially speaking, from the math and language arts standpoint, and we went from K to 12, and we took Common Core where we thought it was useful, and we created our own standard where we thought maybe something could be different. And I think it, it, it's starting to work into what we were just discussing as an ideal, which is including other stakeholders. The board listen to parent concerns. Well, yes and no, because last October we had 200 parents that were angry. Right. They developed this idea of, of recreating our own standards. They didn't let parents watch the process, and the end result is, is highly common core -ish. It's like 88% or higher. So, I mean, I'm glad that we're doing something independent from everyone else. I right. think that's a good step. But I don't think parents are completely satisfied with the end product, and I don't sure. think we need to hash that no, too no. much or beat it to no, death. No, no, which is absolutely, I don't disagree with you, but it was a start. It is yes. a start. Yes. And I think that one thing we've seen thus far, not just with that, but it is from a Manchester standpoint and other areas, is a real listening to of stakeholders. In, um, not to get too far off topic, but a hot, but a hot button topic in Manchester for the last few years has been redistricting. And as people started to get concerned and voice their concerns as parents mm -hmm. and for where they lived, the mm -hmm. board and the superintendent have done a job, a, a, a good job, it's a good start, of listening to concerns, mm -hmm. making changes where they can, and moving forward where they feel they must. And so I don't disagree that everybody might not have been um, included as much as they would have liked or needed to be. But it was a start, right. and and I think that that at least is a is a foot in the right direction. And the mayor's suggestion that we get rid of smarter balance and the board's committee's support of that was another huge step. Whether this will, you know, be the case or not is yet to be seen. Because I, I think the uh, commissioner says spoke through uh, Heather Gage and said that the AG might intervene if a district mm. does not administer these non-validated smarter balance tests. Right. It's it's been interesting how the um, this part of the play has been changing again and again. Yes. You know, as the mayor says often, he was promised a waiver from the test. Right. You know, that we wouldn't have to adhere to the smarter balance, that we could use something else. It was led to believe that there was one existing. I don't think they'll debate whether he was promised one. Fair enough. But, um, but using something else nonetheless. Right. And so I think that as he does, um, he takes that and he holds, you know, he says, this is what we agreed to or this is what I was told would happen and this is what's going to happen. And we need that's to find a way to make it terrific. happen. Yeah. For, for better or worse, whichever side of the fence you fall on, you know, I admire that. And, yes. I, and I think mm -hmm. he's, he's working towards getting the best solution we can have. Because mm -hmm. there's been a lot of negative talk about some of those tests. They're not validated. Nashua didn't like them. They thought they were not as academic oriented as they should be. There's too much sociological or psychological questions being put before kids and essentially data mining them. And mm. so if we can develop our own test or pick a test that doesn't have those pitfalls, I think that's going to make parents very, very happy. But are the parents or the community, are they going to get the results of these summative tests? 
as we would have if we had a particip or we would have if we participated in the statewide assessment meaning si similar to how now we get the kneecap right. you know, results and whatnot I, I couldn't say because I'm not right. I'm not in that okay. camp so to speak maybe it's too early to tell I would right. assume we would um, again while going back to, to your earlier point about inclusion in the standards development they've done a better job of communicating updates on you know the curriculum updates that assistant superintendent Ryan would send out periodically things of that nature I don't think they would shy away from sharing the results might they do it right off the bat as we're still figuring things out I don't know mm -hmm. but I don't think they're in a position where they would want to keep that from anybody no it's because we um, want to know what our, how our district's doing absolutely. even though we're not participating in the statewide assessment we still kind of right have whether some or not base. We've made a good decision. If we have to go back to the drawing board, what do we have to do? I, I think one of the most important things to remember for everybody is that this is a process. And just because we passed the standards doesn't mean we're done. It means that we need to be willing to look at it again. It's a living, we hear this all the time. This is yeah, education right, right. jargon right mm -hmm. here, but it's a living, breathing document. And, and we need to be willing and ready and able to go back and adjust so that we don't tie ourselves into something for any length of time that isn't potentially working. Well, that's good. That Manchester knows that they can rewrite portions as they see fit. I would hope. I, I believe is, part of it is at the end of the first year is to go mm -hmm. back and take a look the and teachers, reevaluate. Since they teachers were involved that, in the process, right. They kind of know what expectations they are looking at. That would be my expectation, and I believe it's the administration's expectation. And I think if we get the assessment that's not aligned to the core then our standards can deviate too. Mm -hmm. I mean, because if we can branch out and expand beyond that narrow focus, I think everything can develop together in a positive direction, mm -hmm. right. hopefully. Well, well, that's good with the Smarter Balance. So now, is there anything like uh, with legislation? Here we, we're in a we're in a legislative mode, uh, not, um, we're in a political mode right now right. with all the candidates, you know, some saying well, they're, not, they're opposing Common Core, others saying, well, not probably nothing, but We'll be going to Concord soon mm -hmm. and figuring out what to do about education in New Hampshire. So I'm sure the unions are going to be chiming in about what they want for education and the parents may be having legislative, legislation put in for what they want or don't want for, for education sure. policy in the state. What we do is, is I'm a part of a, two larger organizations. I, I work with the Manchester Education Association, but we're a part of the National Education Association, which has a state chapter as well, and so we reckon, uh, we rely on the state chapter to really work a lot of the you know, the state legislation and, and whatnot. Um, ta you know, what's nice is we have representatives from all around the state who work with the the organization so that they can represent the needs and the wants of all of our districts and all of mm -hmm. our uh, varying populations, so to speak. Um, you know, what we look for, I mean, right now, when I think of legislation, I just happen to, I kind of default to labor legislation um, because we tend to see more, you know, that tends mm -hmm. to be the immediate threat in the last right. few years has been the labor uh, legislation. You know, things of going back to the idea of continuing contract, they, they lengthen the amount of time before you hit that status. Um, there are legislators out there who are trying to take away the right for groups such as mine to collect um, partial dues to cover uh, right. you know, right bargaining, to right, the right to work and whatnot. And, and so that's where my mind defaults personally um, because it's been such a hot button thing the last two or three could, years. Could you explain that for the audience so sure. they can understand in terms of a teacher for joining the union? Yep. I had a friend who's a neighbor and she said in Londonderry they were not required to join the union mm -hmm. and they were not required to pay in because some places I've heard that you have to pay the negotiating fee. Sure, and yeah some I'd be happy to. Because I yeah. think everybody is a little bit confused yeah, on how that yeah. works Yeah, no out. absolutely. Um, we talked about right to work states so essentially in Manchester as well you're not required to join the union. You mm -hmm. know, we want, we would love you to but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. We are also not um, an agency fee local as of right now meaning if you're not a member, you get all of the contractual benefits without any financial cost to you whatsoever. Okay. Um, some districts, and I believe Nashua is one, for example, where you don't have to be a member of the union, but you do have to pay what's called an agency fee. And okay. it's a percentage 
of the total fee that is deemed the amount that goes towards contract negotiation and mm -hmm. contract enforcement. It ten it's set by a national group. It tends to be about 70 to 75 percent of the dues. So you're covering what you what covers you. You know, you receive the benefits of the contract, mm -hmm. and if you weren't a member but had a contractual issue, I would still have to represent you by law. Oh, okay. And so the idea behind it is if I have to represent you for the contractual issues, mm -hmm. that you would pay what it cost to negotiate and uphold that contract. So how is it set, district by district, or is it by whichever it's, it's the NEA or AFD? You would negotiate it into your local contract. Okay. And so that's why, again, we don't have it. Londonderry, I guess, does not, but I believe or Nashville did not. does. This was 10, 15, sure, 15 sure. years ago. Things um, have changed. It's obviously something from a labor standpoint that we would, you know, we believe we should maintain it because mm -hmm. either way we need to um, represent those whether they're under, they're in our group or not. Uh, but at the same time, we believe that's fair. We're not, they don't have to pay for the money that goes towards, first of all, no member pays for lobbying or political contributions. Where does that money come from? That comes from? from a separate fundraising. We have political action. I donate to our political action groups. It's a mm -hmm. separate amount of money that I pay each paycheck that I have one designated for the state, one designated for the national. But you could join and you wouldn't have to donate that. So every member picks whether they're, uh, you know, what level of membership Absolutely. or yep. donations. And even give. then within that, you could choose to donate, but you might do $20 and I might do 10 Right. It's, it is completely up to the individual. But that money is taken from the check by the if district. If you decide. It, when you opt in or opt correct. out. Or you could just write one long, you know, one single check, check or what right. or what not but that's another misconception i've had people who haven't been members or have dropped membership because they don't want their money going towards candidates they don't believe in and we try and stress to them mm. that none of your money does because we cannot use dues dollars to support political action mm. it has to come from that separate fund okay and what about some of the money goes towards teacher training yes absolutely we and, the and NEA New Hampshire has a, a, an enormous number of trainings that we offer to members at reduced or no cost mm -hmm. and that comes from uh, dues dollars absolutely okay and with that those meetings there's no political bent nope. to those trainings it's no it would be it would tend to be things uh, you know what does a first year teacher need to know come on mm -hmm. in or it might be common core and, and becoming more familiar with common core because so many of our districts have adopted it mm -hmm. um it, it could be anything of that nature but they are not political by design at all um because it's i believe the number is something to the effect of 25 percent of membership at pretty much every level is republican which is not what people tend to associate with labor organizations you know mm -hmm. we tend to think it would be even even less than that but it's about a quarter of the membership mm -hmm. and so we don't want to alienate members by by making them feel as if they have to subscribe to a political belief or a, or a party well then what happens in Nashville when it's the election time and a lot of the um, union members are told they have to put the union signs on their lawns and they are required to stand at the polls and they're paid even though they don't want to I've had people say that I don't want to be here right but I am now how does that happen I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but they're AFT, and I have no idea okay. how their organization so not, works. And it may not be but to I, teachers. It might be the other unions. It could I'm be, not but I'll certain. tell you from a Manchester standpoint, we ask everybody to do what they are comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind a sign, please put one up. Some people feel uncomfortable about that. Mm -hmm. Some people really feel uncomfortable about standing at a polling site. Mm -hmm. We would mm -hmm. never ask that of anybody. Right. Um, the other thing, you know, it's it's people's worst nightmare, which is funny in a way, is making phone calls. Oh, I don't I don't want to call somebody and solicit them. And listen, I've been yelled at on the phone. I get it, you know. Yeah. So so we take a very um, laid back approach to what we ask of people. Mm -hmm. Do what you can. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, please do something because politics, unfortunately, are such a big part. Of education and um, and the attack against the unions is it's big, unbelievable. Yeah. So, it's unbelievable. I, it's a final question. I know you don't have to answer if you don't want I'd to. Be so, happy to. with the right to work, how would it adversely affect the teachers if it's voluntary in, voluntary out? No, I mean, how do you see what would the negative effects be just to the teachers, not the other unions? Well, to so the teachers, I I think that if if we're talking broad strokes here, okay. When you look at other, when you look at public employee unions. 
I think you don't necessarily associate teachers groups with being as strong as other public employee groups. Mm -hmm. You think public employee unions, you know, fire police of that nature. I mean, that's that's always been the idea is that you see them everywhere. They are very strong. Teachers, and I am one, and, mm -hmm. I, and I, I think this is what makes us so fantastic, frankly, is that we are so dedicated to the job every single day. And not to uh, every, you know, so are yeah, police and fire. Yeah, That's not right. what I'm saying. No, I, yeah, I just understand. For those out there in TV land. But um, that, that our first thought isn't always getting out and being active from a labor standpoint. Right. And so when we have people who say, so I'm not going to be a part of this because maybe I don't recognize the benefit, long-term benefit, mm -hmm. the political benefit, um, all of those extra benefits, but I'm still covered under this contract. Not having the right to work, uh, not having the ability to collect an agency fee allows somebody to say, you know what, I don't like what you did today, mm -hmm. so I'm going to leave. Or I don't really see the benefit, you know, about what happened to me yesterday, so I'm going to leave. Instead of recognizing that no matter what, we're all in this together and this is something that's there for you. And it costs money. It does. I mean, we talked earlier yeah. before we came in here about, about the importance of money in so many things. It costs money to negotiate that. It costs money to maintain it. We have people who come in whose sole job is to help us enforce our contracts you know, throughout the state. And these are people who, who specialize in making sure that the teacher's rights are upheld. Mm -hmm. And so not having that would allow somebody to say, well, thank you, but I'm not going to do my part to maintain that. But for a teacher, can't you already do that? I mean, can't teachers already opt out? They can't, and I happen so, to believe that that shouldn't be the case. Oh, so you want it so that they all should I don't think join? they should necessarily have to be a part of the union. But they should pay but that they should negotiated have to, pay. That's my personal belief, absolutely. Okay. I believe that you fall under it. You know, whatever benefit – we have people who – they have what I don't want to give specific cases, but you know somebody is wrongly accused of something, or somebody doesn't get a job that they should have been promoted to because they've been a teacher in a building for so long, mm -hmm. and when we help them get there, they're still able to say thank you, but, right, but that's the end. Then they shouldn't be asking just by it, right. It should go just both morality ways. wise. If they don't pay in, they shouldn't be. That's yeah, how they I shouldn't feel. be represented. Right, but how they you, are. Just as a side note, sure. how do you think the uh, market basket is doing without its union? As here? a former market basket employee, oh, really? I cannot, I could not be prouder of of what they're doing. And I, I've said it to a handful of people, but it would be really nice, hopefully, to see uh, a the little outcome. guy work. You yes. know, the little guy win yeah. something there because. I don't. It's been 20 years since I worked in a market basket, but um, to see them feel so strongly about that and and to stand up and say yes. this is what we're going to do, I think is amazing. And it the is. public joining the public in support with them. is That's the amazing. Biggest. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It is. It's um, the biggest. They're making. There's some people there making sacrifices that a lot of us can't fathom, mm. right. and um, I'm really really impressed. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I hope it comes to a resolution. I hope it does as well. And I'd like to see parents get behind uh, teachers in, in the same. Dedicated yeah. fashion. Mm. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. Yes, absolutely. And so, so we, as opponents to Common Core, technically, um, we are worried about the teachers mm -hmm. and worried about how they really feel about Common Core. And because we'll be just getting into it with the curriculum alignment now. Sure. And they'll be seeing the, the, the big animal here. And we hope that they will be heard. If they're, we hope that they will be able to have a voice. An honest voice, mm -hmm. like either in your, the union meetings or in these teacher development meetings or whatever it is that, you know, if it's if it's not working, if they don't like it, that they won't be ostracized. Mm. So you Nashua, know? they're anonymously talking about their feelings on the smarter balance that we had to pilot and field test. Mm -hmm. They're not free to come out, and I've heard from Manchester teachers too, that they don't feel like they can come out and say what they, they truly think. I would hope... First and foremost, I, I think that this is, it's a process, you know, and, and we did pass the standards, but we're not done. Next is a curriculum, and that's going to take some time. And I would hope that as we go along, this idea of including teachers, which started with building the standards, mm -hmm. will continue. And I believe it will continue. And hopefully, that helps ease some of the concerns about whether or not someone can have a voice. Mm -hmm. Because if you see 
that you know when we presented the academic standards when the teachers did um, they're the ones who spoke it wasn't that they put something together and someone and, and then a district administrator presented it or a third party presented it they were able to stand in front of that board and say here's what I worked on and this is what we came up with and I'm hoping that that starts this idea of you can have a voice. We should all be able to have a voice. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. it's a shame, and, and we see it here too, obviously, that anybody feels they can't. Um, if someone feels they can't, I guess that's part of my job. You know, as the head of the MEA, is I, I do hear concerns and whatnot, and, and I work closely with the administration to voice what we can and to, and to help get that message out there if it isn't being mm -hmm. received. And in the past year, to give credit to the teachers and the administration, mm -hmm. we were able to bring together somebody from every elementary school to talk about some of their curriculum concerns around math and, and language arts as the standards were being mm -hmm. created mm -hmm. because some people felt that there was too much, um, uh, hodgepodge. it was too much of a hodgepodge. There wasn't enough structure. There mm -hmm. wasn't enough uniformity. And we were able to facilitate that so that we could start this process of, it's almost like learning to trust again. You know, yeah. you go through so much time where you don't feel you can be a part of something or when you don't feel your voice is being heard that when somebody offers it to you, you're gun shy. Mm -hmm. I, you, you hesitate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we on both ends have started to, to rebuild that trust and to, to say, if you have a concern, bring it up mm -hmm. because yeah. we're going to listen and we have to let people, we have to let people have that opportunity right. to, to, to hear you and to work right. with you. We have a couple minutes left and so the assessment now of the teachers, is that gone out the window do you think? Or are no, we still going to be assessing on it right now, the 20%? Actually. Um, that's something I, I think I have to write a letter, I forgot. Um, thanks for reminding me. Yeah. But uh, one of the things we're working on right now is a, is a completely new evaluation method. There's some of our, we have um, five schools that were SIG schools, uh, school improvement grant schools and mm -hmm. they had to adopt as part of that grant a new evaluation model that included tying in part of the evaluation to